Welcome to Nightmare County. I'm your host, Rando M. Cool. Tonight, we're going to talk about some strange things that have happened in my life. And I'm hoping that maybe me talking about these things, you can be able, you'll be able to relate to them as well. Because I'm pretty sure everyone in this world has had something strange happen to them that they cannot really describe in any sane sense. So, in doing that, I'm going to tell you three stories, possibly four, but we'll see how we'll see how long the time is on the video. Um, but I'm going to tell you stories that are going to be pretty short, but they are quite unique. They're unique to me anyway because they happen to me, and um, not, like I honestly believe that everyone has something happen to them, and some people just don't go out and tell the people. So. If you feel like after this video is over with, you feel like you want to talk about something or tell me something that's happened to you, you can shoot me a comment or something like that or whatever. You can DM me on uh, Facebook or, or Instagram. But let's go ahead and get in the video and we'll talk about that later. The first story that I want to talk about, I'm actually I'm going to do a progression of the first strange thing that happened to me that I can remember. I was probably around nine years old and my family we had just came home from getting groceries late one night and this is probably around 92 93 and um we just came home from getting groceries and we lived up on top of a hill and close to the highway and right across the highway was a thicket of pine trees on the other side and uh I mean, by the time we got home, it was already dark. Anyways, my dad, my mom, my brother, and me, we started getting out. And uh, as we're getting the groceries out, all of a sudden, there was this, this blinding, bright, white light. And this, I'm not, not any headlights. There was no car that was going by. It wasn't a spotlight or anything like that. But it was seriously just a blinding, bright, white light. And it was only there for maybe only maybe a few moments, maybe two or three seconds. And all of a sudden, it went from like a, 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 a big bang type of brightness all of it, all the way down to a, uh, look like someone was holding a, uh, a large flashlight, but big enough that you could see through the trees. And I remember we just, we just sat there and, because it, it, you know, it, it was shocking. And it, because we couldn't believe where this bright light was coming from. And all of a sudden, that light started like dancing kind of like moving back from the trees and I'm not talking about down low I'm talking about a good 40 50 feet in the air where you can see it and at the uh, on top of the trees and all of a sudden it started it looked like it was dancing through trees and then it just shot off and that's not a lie that I'll never forget seeing that and it's something I'm, and it's what's funny is it's a it's a memory that I sometimes forget which is, and I don't normally forget things, especially things from my childhood, uh, especially something like this, because you know you figured that would be something important. But I'll never. It's and it's here lately. I started remembering this memory, and I'm t I started talking to my parents, and you know my brother. We were like, yeah, you know, I was like, man, I was like, man, I, I couldn't remember if it was a dream. I talked to them about, yeah, this happened. But of course, my parents' story, their recollection of it is a, a lot better than mine but and you know you grew up I didn't believe even though I wanted to believe that you know there's monsters and stuff like that it makes you question things to a certain aspect because I know that there's nothing nothing can move through the trees like that nothing can I mean from a, I mean, a blinding white light, bright light white light to all of a sudden so, and all of us saw it, not just me. So it was, you know, it makes you feel better when everyone else in your family sees something and it's just not you. And it, I remember it bothering us. I remember my dad going, we put the groceries in. He went in, got a flashlight and a gun, and he went across the uh, the road. And this was uh, on our property at that. I mean, well, we didn't own the property across the road, but it was uh, owned by the uh, forest company and everything. So we're we're on our property on our side of the highway and this is out in the middle of the sticks in east texas deep east texas and 
my dad went looking, you know, but what was weird is that that, that light, how it just kind of, sh- it was, how it zoomed away a little bit to where it was, it looked like it was somewhat smaller, but it was still up, still up high. And it was bright enough that we could still see it. Because even in those thick of trees, up in the, the pine needles, the leaves and everything, even if you had a flashlight, you probably wouldn't see it. Because it would be, it'd be this, too many, too many things would be blocking its path. And it sure as hell wasn't no lightning bug. Or fire bug, whatever you want to call them. So it was bright enough to be able to still be seen, and it just started dancing a little bit, and it just shot off. And we watched it to disappear. It was enough to creep you out, and enough to, from a family to rush to get inside the house. And I'll never forget that. And you, you think that's something we'd never forget, but it's a memory that I feel like sometimes it just slips away. And there are things that happen to make me remember it every once in a while. They help jog my memory. And I just wanted to tell you about that one because that was, you know, you don't want to go around and tell people that, you know, you immediately believe in aliens or that there's something that's out there. I honestly do believe, especially now, that there are other things out there, whether they be demons, spirits, aliens, or whatever. I do believe, and it's ignorant to think that we are just here alone with, you know, a few animals and stuff. Um... That's just ignorance I, I, to just not acknowledge it, po- the possibility that there is something else out there that we don't know anything about. That is just as intelligent, if not more intelligent than us. So, I mean, you can call me crazy, but I know what I saw. And it's something that's never left me. Um, second story. Well, it, I guess it, there used to be this place called the, uh, the Bragg Lights. Or the lights of Saratoga, and this was this would happen later on in my life. Whenever um, I was in my high school years, my almost probably my junior or senior year of high school. So you're looking at around 99, 2000, 2000 2001. And I went with my cousin, who was my best friend at the time. Best friend, still my best friend. Uh, my cousin, cousins are always your best friends, in my opinion. But. Uh, because they're family and they're with you for your entire life. But uh, I'll never forget, we went out and we went riding on the, um, well, there's this road. Well, anyways, I'm kind of messing up here. There's this road not cl- close to Coons, Texas. Coons, Texas. And uh, it's called Braggalot Road near Saratoga, a lot near Saratoga and Coons. And, um, the story goes that there used to there used to be there, there's no story there used to be a train track that went down this road and this, this road is pretty much a straight shot and it goes for quite a ways to towards a we used to be a train track to went all the way to Beaumont Texas they carried cattle and freight and everything but by the um, mid 1930s they pulled up the railroad tracks and that was it you know because it, it was. The, uh, after the virgin pine and everything in that area and some of the resources had been uh, dried up, there was no purpose for the railroad anymore, so they pulled the tracks. But the road, they turned it into basically a county road almost. And you can drive up and down this road. And we happened to go uh, during the summer. And I'll never forget because <laughs> there was a lot of people out on that road that night in their vehicles and everything. Because Everyone knew about the Bragg Lights, where I, where I come from, in East Texas. Everyone knows about the Bragg Lights. And everyone goes on this road to see if this, there'll be this bright orb that will just appear out of nowhere. And there's all these stories from it might be swamp gas or whatever, to uh, there used to be this train, uh, the guy was walking the railroad tracks, he stuck his head out, train clipped him, and uh, knocked his head off, and he's constantly looking for his, uh, his head with the, the lantern. And that story can be found... And I think North Carolina and in Michigan. There's all these, I mean, there's several stories that are very similar to this one. So, depending on what story you want to believe. I like the, you know, the headless man looking for his, uh, his head. That's just got to, it's a lot better than swamp gas. But, even if it was swamp gas, and you saw a bright light, the way what, and at first we didn't see anything that night. None of us were drinking because, I mean... I'm not gonna lie. We were kind of straight edge. We didn't we didn't drink or you know do drugs or anything. Uh, when I was in high school and everything, so um, we kind of just uh, we hung out together and we hung out with uh, two other people. Now they had had uh, 
they did just smoke cigarettes. They they smoked a lot of cigarettes and stuff. I, I didn't. We didn't smoke, so um, I was too health conscious to smoke. So we went with two other people. It was a dude. I think his the dude and his mom and his their kid, and me and my buddy we rode in his truck. So we were. You know, we're joking around, having fun and everything. We had seen people go by, but the later we stayed, there was less cars out there. And we went down a good ways and toward the point there was no one there. You couldn't see headlights no matter where you were. So we turned all the lights off and, you know, we were sitting around talking and everything. Then all of a sudden, this bright orb just appears out of nowhere, right in between, in between our, uh, our vehicles. And what sucks is my... Uh, my cousin, he recorded it, cause we were, we were just fooling around with the, uh, the the camcorder and everything, and he was recording. And what's it's and it I know it sounds like any other story, but they don't he lost that uh, recording because it was because we even watched we watched the recording after we were done, and this bright this bright orb just appears out of nowhere, and it kind of just hovered there, and it was it was so weird, cause at first you know. We're all joking around. All of a sudden, it was like bam, and it was like complete silence. Everything went silent. There wasn't a sound to be made in those woods. You couldn't hear a vehicle. You didn't hear music. You didn't hear anybody laughing or joking far away. And we got dead quiet because it was like what the hell. And um, so there's a bright orb just sitting right there in front of us, probably about the size of a, uh, a ring light that most people have. Probably like a, uh, I say about 12 to 15 inch uh, circular orb appear and it didn't you know it looked like when you shine a flashlight through the fog and you kind of get that hazy effect that's but you could still see that it was uh, in, in a circular form and it was just floating there and it was you swamp gas i don't know i've seen lightning bugs i've seen lightning bugs in the fog they do not do that they do not create that volume of light and because it wasn't like a light that it didn't put off light like it didn't light up anything it was just there and you could see this light and that's the other thing like I said it didn't put off light like it didn't light up anything it was just there and of course like a bunch of idiots we decided to approach it walk towards it see what it would do and everything and as soon as we did it shot off down the uh, straight down the this the, the dirt road where the train tracks used to be and it kind of went up a ways and it kind of shifted over and then it, it vanished it was so bizarre to see and we were so excited because we we know we saw something and we cannot wait to tell anybody of course you go off and tell people and they just kind of like laugh at you shake their head like and then you know mutter under breath that you're insane or crazy or you're just pulling their leg but what sucks is we had it recorded and we that recording got lost because that's something you, you want to show people but we just we were too late and but yeah I'll, that's the second occurrence in my life that was just totally bizarre the third one I don't think it's not necessarily something supernatural or out of this world something from this, out of this world and I've had a lot of stuff happen to me but I think this one's a little bit different uh, for some reason I felt like I needed to tell people um and this one happened no more than a less than a year ago but less than a year ago i went in to see an eye doctor strange thing to happen right so i go in to see an eye doctor everyone's awesome great joking around i mean nice of course people having to wear the mask and stuff at the time and everyone's courteous you go in and do all your stuff you know i'm wearing my mask and i'm sitting in what you get into the doctor's office doctor's office is awesome because he loves boxing i love boxing so he's got all this boxing stuff paraphernalia all over his uh his uh i'd say yes his eye doctor's office anyways so you know sit in and he's got two other um he's got a uh, two temps there with him who are trying to learn you know the eye doctor as well and he's he's kind of going over things with him as he's checking my eyes and stuff anyway it comes time to we've already had the uh the exam and everything but he wanted to check the pressure on my eyes oh uh, and I, we'd already done this previously but anyways he had a it's like this little rod and everything it's got a soft felt tip not felt tip but it's got a soft tip and everything and this is the first time i've ever had this done and he asked me do you want me to put you mean uh 
dilate your eyes. It's like, well, if you want, I mean, you know, whatever. But he said, well, I got this numb stuff I got to put in your eyes as well. So I lean back. He puts the, the numbing stuff in my eyes. So because he's fixing to touch on my eye with this uh, little gauge. It's to check the, uh, you know, for glaucoma and everything. And I'm sitting there and I'm just chilling and everything. I'm listening to him talk to that lady. You know, I'm in my thoughts and I'm just thinking about this, you know, thinking about the day. We had just came from Big Bend National Park the day before and how beautiful it was. I was thinking about how beautiful it was and everything. And then the doctor's talking and the next thing you know, it was like the whole world was gone. And, I'm, and I'll never forget the feeling. And I don't know if anyone's ever felt like this, but I remember the doctor talking and I'm talking to the lady and I looked at him and I'm sitting there and I'm thinking and it was this complete blackness but not like a normal blackness it wasn't no, it wasn't dark it was dark it was dark as hell and but it was almost like a um a black liquid everything around me was you know there's this liquidy black uh look to it like everything like there was if there was a light it was you know how you shine a uh, black tar you shine a, a light on black tar how it kind of depending on how the tar is swirled and everything, it catches the light a certain way. Well, that was the entire area that I was in when I blacked out. And I'm sitting there, and, I'm, I'm, and in this area, I'm moving very slowly. I'm sitting there, I'm picking my hand up, and I'm trying to look at what what is on, what is around me and everything. And I'm like, man, what what is this? And all of a sudden, I feel like I need to lay down in it because I was I was moving around in it and it, it had sapped all my energy from me and I felt like I need to lay down and close my eyes because it was that's what it was like and I remember laying down and I was facing close my eyes and then I heard my grandmother's voice and my grandmother had passed away several years before and she her voice is unmistakable I'm pretty sure y'all have uh, grandmothers out there whose voices are unmistakable as well. But her voice was unmistakable. It's not something I would just imagine out of any out of anything either, out of thin air. And she said something that she would have said to me. She never said this to me, but I, something she would have said to me. And and she told me, "You're not." She, she said my name. She says, "You're not supposed to be sleeping right now. You need to get up." And, I mean, I'll never forget that, that sound, because it, re it reverberated in my mind. It still does. Every time I think of those words, it's like a wake-up call every time. And um, I heard it, and I came to. Come to find out, I had been knocked out for quite a little bit, and I had... I had a guy over me with a beard who was fixing to administer CPR to me. They said that, uh, and the doctor and the temps, they're all, I mean, there's room, there's people in this room all of a sudden because they're, they're scared. They don't know what the heck's happened. They've never seen happen what has happened to me. And they're all worried because they're, because like the way I came through. When I came through, as soon as I heard what my grandmother said to me my, in whatever state I was in, I remember crawling up and I remember seeing this light and um, I remember reaching for it and fighting to get to it it's, and it's like I was it's like I was being propelled out of it but I was also fighting crawling get up and when I came to there's this you know there's the, the, the eye doctor and there's this guy that who's you know certified to do CPR standing over me I look at him I put my hands up and I was like, I'm sorry. <laughs> I later started telling them I was sorry. And they were like, they were worried about me because are you okay? We, He's like, you just, you were just, you were there looking at us and everything. And you were gone. Like you just fell like, and then you had like no pulse. You just, you were gone. Like, it's like you just dropped, dropped dead. And that, those words, you know, they, I guess they kind of bothered me at that moment. And I told him, I was like, no, no, I was like, I'm, 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 I'm good. I'm, I was like, I'm just, uh, I feel really tired. I was like, I feel like I've been fighting for 
and I, you know, being someone who loves boxing and everything, I, th- I I was more tired then than I had ever been in my entire life. And I'm talking about either when I used to bell, help Bell Hay or any other kind of uh, hard jobs that I used to work, you know, growing up. And um, I was more tired then. I mean, when I used to do boxing and everything, I used to do these, you know, rounds of stuff, grueling rounds, one after another, you know. Even then, I wasn't that tired. Not like this. This was like the whole life of, had been sucked out of me. And um, anyways, the dog, like I said, they were worried about me. They helped push me up back up in the chair and everything. I sat down and I was like, you know, breathing. They're like, they're really worried about. It. They didn't know. They asked me if I had ever done this before. I've, I've never passed out in my entire life. I have, I have jumped off of. I have dove off and accidentally dove off into a rock when I was younger, and even that didn't knock me out. I woke up dazed and scared because I thought I had scalped myself, but I'd actually just cut myself. On, um, actually, I have a patch of hair that will never grow back right there. And um, but it did skint my for my head my forehead a little bit, but you know it didn't break my neck or anything. But I've never been knocked out before, never in my entire life. I've never been, I've never gotten. I might have drank a little bit until I've blacked out that away, but nothing. This was nothing like that. So, anyways, they get me and they take me into the room. They get me, they make sure that I'm okay, that I can walk and everything. You know, and I'm walking slow. So I get up, I go into the uh, waiting room, and uh, my family was literally out, because, you know, you could not, because of COVID and everything, not everyone could be in the, uh, the office or the waiting room or anything. So they're out there waiting in the, in the truck. And I'm in there, you know, by myself, and I'm getting to and everything. And, um... Well, finally, you know, the guy, he comes and checks on me, makes sure that I'm all right one more time. And I'm like, yeah, I'm fine. And they're telling me, like, if I if I feel like I might need to go to the hospital, and I'm stubborn as hell, I'm not going to lie. I mean, I'll go to the hospital if I have to, but I didn't feel like I needed to go to the hospital for some reason. Um, it's, weird that, it's weird to say that even after what just happened, I felt safe. I don't know if that makes, would make sense to anyone, but... I felt like everything was going to be okay, but this needed to happen for some reason. So, anyway, so I, the guy helps me walk out there to my family, and they're sitting there, and, you know. And I remember getting in the truck and explaining what happened, and uh, the like all this uh, emotion. The, it was an emotional. At that point, there was this giant emotional dump. But it wasn't emotional because of the fact that I thought I had died or anything. Because I've never actually been afraid of death. I honestly, you know, being raised fairly religious my entire life. So I've always thought that's just the next step to, you know, to everything. You know, whether you believe that you're going to ascend to something or you just turn to dust. Or if you get turned into a grasshopper or a cockroach or whatever. Hope to God that never happens, but um, I know it's not going to happen. But I just remember um, because I remember everything so vividly, and I still do. And it's a strange feeling. And it was a, it might have been an emotional dump of hearing my grandmother's voice, or it could have been. seeing what I saw that was there. So, I mean, it's like something almost like out of a sci-fi movie that I've never seen before. But, uh, yeah, so, that was one extremely strange thing that happened to me after another. And I've had other things. I've had times in my life when I'd be out in the woods and you'd be looking through the woods and you think that you see something and you think your eyes are just playing tricks on you. You ever seen the movie, and of course, if you're watching this, you probably have seen Predator. And whenever he's camouflaged from everybody, it looks weird, you know, when he's running through the the woods, the uh, jungle and everything. 
it's and I had not seen Predator at the time the first time I'd ever seen anything like this it was whenever I was uh, probably before I was 10 years old and me and my brother used to go out in the woods all the time and I would see stuff and I'd be we'd be you know we'd play playing hide and go seek in the woods and all of a sudden you're sitting there and you're seeing this image that that's it, it, like light, the light, uh, everything's wrapped around it, like everything, and it it's moving, and it's like looking through a um, almost like a bowl of water. I don't even want to say because it's got that effect to it and everything. It's got a hazy uh, effect to it, and it's warping everything around it. And you can see the the shape of it, but and it, you know this I would see this happen two or three times in my life when I'd be out walking on a trail not too far from where I was from and everything and you'd see this stuff you get to a point where you're like oh it's just my either my got my eyes are blurry and I didn't have you can I didn't have a cell phone at the time to take pictures so you just see this stuff and you're like it's just something you know it's your imagination playing with you you know sometimes out in the woods but that being said yeah, so these are some of the strange things that have happened to me, and I want to know if anything has ever strange happened to you, or you got a story you'd like to tell, and um, you want to tell me about it, you want to talk about things backwards and forwards, or whatever, uh, send me a message on Instagram or Facebook under Nightmare County, or you can leave a comment below, and I'll try to respond to it. But I hope you enjoyed this. I hope it's not terribly too boring. And, um... Hopefully you've never had anything bad happen to you, and you've only had interesting things happen to you that maybe you couldn't explain. So, like I said, hit that like button if you haven't already, and subscribe, and I deeply appreciate it. And I hope you have a, uh, a good night, so don't be a stranger and tune in. <laughs>